Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably already know that recently Adobe added landscape masking to Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, and Camera Raw. When it was introduced, I did a video on it, but that was more of an overview video on landscape masking. In today's video, I'm going to delve a little deeper into how to use landscape masking in Lightroom. Now, more specifically, I'll be working in Lightroom Classic, but what I'll be showing you in today's video also applies to Lightroom CC and Camera Raw. Of course, those applications are just cosmetically different. They work exactly the same way. Now, as you can see, I have an image open. Uh, what I've done to this image, it was slightly crooked, uh, so I straightened it. And I went to the basic tab and I moved five sliders, exposure, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. And that's all I've done to it. I'd like to add some pop to it. So I'm going to do that via masking. To get to masking, click on this circle right here. And you'll notice that right at the top here or near the top is landscape. That's the new landscape masking I'm talking about. And if we roll this open, you'll notice that Lightroom will find various elements in the scene, specifically for this photo it found sky architecture vegetation water artificial ground and natural ground that's six of the seven possible landscape masks available the only one that is missing is mountains so if you do have an image with mountains in it as well it would find all of those different types of things that are in the image and you'll be able to mask them individually now if i hover over each of these i'll get a red overlay on the image that will show what Lightroom thinks is that specific thing. For example, if I hover over sky, you'll notice that a red overlay appears over the sky. If I hover over architecture, I get architecture. Now it's not perfect. You can see that building that's in the background on the left-hand side, it has most of it, but it's missing the side of it. And it thinks some of the rocks or vegetation there are buildings as well. Now, if I go down to vegetation, you'll notice that it has the vegetation pretty well covered. I think that's pretty good. If I go to water, you can see it found the water pretty well. It does have part of the sidewalk on the um, uh, kind of the right side of the image there selected as well. So artificial ground, it's going to be the sidewalk uh, around the flower beds. You can see that that was selected pretty well. And natural ground. Now this one didn't select quite as well. It did find the grass. And it also is catching some of that sidewalk that was already masked with artificial ground. So you can see how it's not quite perfect. Uh, it is, you know, catching some things that it shouldn't catch. Also, make note that vegetation and natural ground will always overlap. Natural ground is just usually going to be grass or rocks that are natural on the ground. It's not going to touch any trees. Whereas vegetation is anything that is growing should be caught, and that includes trees. Now, in this case, you can see it also has the top of the lighthouse, and it has a satellite dish that is on top of the building on the right. Thinks that is a tree, I guess. But you can see, so it's not perfect. So you could modify it, though, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, there's a couple different ways you could go about masking. If you only want to mask one thing, like vegetation, then just click on vegetation, and it will build a single mask for vegetation. And let's say you, you want to only do architecture. So I'll just click on architecture and then I'll click create mask. Now it's just creating that single mask. So you could see the overlay. Now I could add or subtract from the mask. And I mentioned that it didn't catch the side of this building. And it also has area over here that I don't think is architecture. So I want to add and subtract from this mask. So I'll click on the add button. And I'm going to add with a brush. And then the brush settings are over here. I'm just going to turn feathering up a little bit more. Flow and density at 100. I'm going to keep auto mask off. I'm going to resize the brush with the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller. Right bracket key larger. And I'll just come in here and I'll add the rest of this building to the mix. So I'll just do it very quickly. I'm probably messed up, but that's okay. All right. Let's say that's good enough. All right, I have the side of the building. Now I want to get rid of this area, so I'm going to subtract from this selection with, again, a brush. We keep the same settings, and I'll get a very a little larger of a brush. I have the Apple Magic Mouse, so I could just slide my finger across it uh, to resize the brush. If you have a, 
a mouse with a center click wheel, you can just spin that wheel as well, usually at least. So I got this modified and get rid of it over here. So I got it modified the way I want it. And for the buildings, I want to add some texture. I happen to have the FX open and I'll add some clarity. And then maybe I'll go to tone and I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure, make them a little bit brighter. So that is one way you could do it. You could just build them one mask at a time. So if I wanted to build another one, I would go up here and create a new mask and then again, go to landscape and then do it all over again. But there's another way. If you're going to build a bunch of masks, just do them all at once. You'll save a lot of time. The reason why I bring this up is I know a lot of people that do it this way. And to me, it's maddening. Why do it one at a time? Do one, then click on plus, do another one, click on plus, do another one. It's much easier, in my opinion, to do them all at once. So we're going to delete all mask. We're going to come up here and click on landscape. We're going to click all the ones I want to create. And let's say I want to create all of them. So click on all of them, then click create make sure you also check create six separate masks or it will just create one mask of everything we don't want that so we're going to do that now we have the six separate masks now you could edit them individually so we're on natural ground right now now i need to modify this uh, because it has some of the sidewalk involved there as well so i'm going to subtract from this with a brush and come in here now i anticipate Adobe improving this so that you don't have to do as many modifications as I'm doing uh, because just with other things they've had for example when they introduced people masking it often uh, didn't find a person's face properly or their eyes properly when it was first introduced now it works very well so they they continually improve it um, so I expect this uh, to be improved as well as time goes on uh, so you don't have to take the time, because this is time-consuming, especially if you're editing a, a, a bunch of photos. It would take you a long time to do this, to come in and just remove it from everywhere. Let's say I don't want it on the flower beds at all. I just want it on the grass. So we'll just make it easy and do it that way. So I get a big brush to come up here and just remove it from all there, there. All right, then I don't want it on these rocks out here in the distance. Okay, so I'm just basically doing the grass, and I want to make the grass brighter. And I'm going to go to color. I'm going to go to point color, actually. I'm going to get the eyedropper, and I'm going to uh, try to click on something that's a brighter green. Like that. Maybe I even can move this over there. And then I'm going to make that work brighter. Then I'm going to get the eyedropper and click on something that's a darker green. And maybe even this darker. And make that a little darker. So I add some tonal variance to the grass. Now I'll go to the next option up. I'll go to artificial ground. And I'll just say that that's selected properly. And here I'm going to uh, go to effects and go to texture. I'm going to add some texture to that. And also I'm going to tone make that a bit brighter and I'm going to go to next that's the water and it over selected over in here so I'll subtract with a brush and I'll take it away from there don't want it selecting there and with the water I think I'll make it darker and then with the vegetation you can see that that selects all the vegetation anything that's growing but it also select a satellite dish over here the top over here so we'll get rid of that and we'll we'll modify uh, that with a brush come here and just take that away and let's just say that's good enough and with this i'm going to make the vegetation overall a little brighter go to architecture again I'd ha it's missing part of the building here so i could add with a brush and resize the brush and just quickly come in and add this building and then subtract with a brush and then subtract over in here all right let's just say that's good enough and here i want to make this a little brighter and then go to effects and add some texture and some clarity and then finally we have the sky and with the sky, I want to add some clarity and some texture and some dehaze, make it a little more foreboding. 
And I'm done with masking. Uh, so if I give you a before and after of just removing all the masks, I'll click this little eyeball here. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So very quickly, if I have a similar scene here, what I would do is I would go to landscape masking, let it detect what it finds. And you found for this image, it found uh, five different things, sky architecture, vegetation, water, and artificial ground. I'll check all of these. I'll make sure I'm creating five separate masks, create the masks, and then just work through them as I did before. And I mean, you could do this with any landscape image, uh, obviously. So we have something like this. Again, I would just go to landscape, let it detect the masks, I found sky, vegetation, water, natural ground. Make sure I'm creating four separate masks. Create the masks. And then I'd have to go in and modify them if needed. Now, for natural ground, it pretty much found the natural ground. So I like that. So I'll come in and I'll bring brightness up. I like going to point color, getting the eyedropper, clicking on a brighter yellow area, even moving it over there, making that brighter. Then getting the eyedropper and clicking on a darker green and then making this darker. I just like to add the tonal variance to the grass doing it this way. Then I'll go to the next mask, which is water. You can see it didn't select the water here, so I need to add it with a brush. And most often you'll be adding and subtracting with a brush. But sometimes if you're doing in a tree, you're doing something with the tree and it's up in the sky, it may select part of the sky. It's easier to select or to minus it or remove it with a sky mask. So you, you will use the other mask now and then. And here I'm going to go to tone and I'm going to make the water a little, I think I'll make it a little darker, but I'll bring out the highlights a little more. Like that. And then with vegetation here, it catches now not only the grass, but the trees as well. And it has part of the water. So I need to subtract again with a brush and come in here and subtract it from there and maybe from over here a little bit. Because I've got part of those rocks in here. I don't know, I'll just make it a little maybe brighter and we'll go to color and we'll add some saturation. And then finally, we have the sky. And with sky, I'll go to effects and I'll add some dehaze clarity and texture and before any of masks that was what we had and after the masks that's what we have so you could see how you do quite a bit with the landscape masking that's now in lightroom classic lightroom cc and camera raw again i think this will be improved as time goes on so we won't have to be adding and subtracting from the masks quite as much that it'll be just more accurate so well, that's it. Hopefully uh, you're able to utilize masking in Lightroom to give that little extra edge to your images. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.